this episode didn't put any true progression at all. <laughs> but it was entertaining. It was really entertaining. One of the most entertaining, if I say so myself. Um, it was pretty much about desires. You know, it went from one thing to another. So you thought it was going to be about, you know, her just trying to lollygag, or skipping out on studying, to now to just playing around the garden, to back to studying with everybody. I have minor pet peeves, and one thing I want to talk about, but we'll get to that later. So let's start from the beginning. The main focus of this episode is Mary. Mary and her obsession. Between you and me, Mary is my least favorite character. She is. I, in my opinion, I'm not a big fan of her. Why? Because how she treats Alan. You know, yes, I could get on how I'm always talking about how Keith is always getting between Jerdo. I guess because Keith knows how Jerdo is, so that's why. When it comes to Alan, Alan, in a way, probably has some sort of feeling for Katarina, but doesn't realize it, but only because she's being manipulated by um, Mary a lot. And because of that, it, sh it shows. You know, I like how every time Alan just does anything, she just immediately just plays around with his head. And tell him to do something else. And then it sucks. I feel sorry for my man, Alan, in a way. And I think Alan, in my opinion, probably is one of my favorite characters when it comes to capturing his harem. Because, you know, he has that very interesting story. So, they're studying inside the place, and Mary trying her best to impress Katrina to do something to get noticed, because she feels like she hasn't been doing much lately. Until recently, um, they get into this book, The Book of Desires. And Mary is forced to see everyone's desires, read through the book. And it was, oh my God. That was funny. That was funny. I love it. She starts off with Jiro. Jiro, like I said, is the least developed character because he didn't go through any, seem to go through any troubles or story like Catherine and I do or everybody else. I guess Jiro is the obvious normal route when it comes to the game itself. So his was simple, you know, he wants to marry Katrina. He had wine, he wants to flirt with her and do naughty things with her. That's his. His is probably the most naughtiest of all the crews. So that one's out the way. Then we had Keith, Keith the brother. Keith is also a good character because how he changed completely to his original self, how he's supposed to be, that playboy and stuff, where he was bullied by Katrina. But now in this world, it's different. So in this way, I guess, he's having his obsession. She, he's a siscon, I guess, in this one. And and he's feeding her sweets and stuff. <laughs> and, of course, she closed the book immediately on that one. Then we have Sophia. Sophia, which is probably the most mysterious and most intriguing character of all the group. Her was, of course, in the library. And how she was very assertive, very aggressive. How she put her hands towards the wall to got really like, Try about to say I love you, but she said first. And of course, with most main characters in dance harems, they always say I love you without really thinking about it. And because that screws over the other character, you're playing with your emotions. <laughs> you gotta stop. Anyways, um, that one was closed off. The next we go to we go to Nicole, and Nicole was very narcissistic. You know, he was freaking tuxedo mask. And with a, with a smile, making all the ladies fall out. Is this how he sees himself? His desire is to be this perfect dude who just shows up in this costume and just knocks girls out with just a wink of his eye. Is this how you see yourself, Nicole? <laughs> I can't blame you, but come on, man. Well, anyways, it completely shatters his character of how I once saw him. And he was cottering off on the night, like some Sarah Moon crap. Then, finally, she completely skips Alan's. She skips Alan. This is what I'm talking about. She treats Alan dirty. <laughs> Alan's there playing his piano and then closes. Like, she didn't want to see Alan. I guess she probably still has some lingering feelings for Alan, I guess. I don't know. And so when she sees Alan with the two people she really likes, it really, I guess, probably hurts her in a way. I don't know. I'm trying to really find out. And finally, we get to Katarina's. If you haven't noticed, Katarina was in everyone's desires, of course. And she always had this thing where she felt like she was out of place. And it's because she was really hungry. Before they went into the book, she was so hungry she didn't eat anything. 
So she had this hunger over her, and her desire was to eat sweets no matter what. She was looking forward to those sweets her friends were making, but she didn't get them. So when she had her, she went to the handsome middle witch's house and starts eating it. And then the witch, the house just goes freaking portal, just eating the house. Enjoyable and stuff. She She's like Kirby. You say Kirby, or probably if you are a fan of Toho, you probably know she's kind of like Yuyuko <laughs> from Toho, where it's that ghost lady who controls death. Um, she's always eating all the time in, in the memes of her, and she's like, she's like the Jinsukyo Kirby in a way. So she's always eating, or she could be Majin Buu if you want to. Anyways, it was just hilarious how Kyrie was eating, and she wanted more and more in her desire to eat sweets. And as Chibi said, her greatest OPT, believe it or not, is sweets. Nothing you get between Katrina and some sweets. It's just the truth. It's like me and chicken wings, baby. It's just meant to be. <laughs> just... So, get out of the book. And that should have been it. Everyone is embarrassed and they walk off. Because, you know, oh shit, she read all of our desires. So they walked off. Everyone but Alan. Alan's the only one who didn't walk off. Which was strange. I guess he just, all he played was piano. So she said, it should stay that way. <laughs> like I said, Mary, I don't like how you treat Alan. And then and it ended up backfiring on her in a way, I guess, because that end scene, the, 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 the barefoot talk thing. <laughs> Let's just say I know someone in the community I'm in who's obsessed with this stuff. <laughs> and I showed him this. Hey. I think this is gonna be a fair episode. <laughs> he got mad. He got mad when I showed him that, like, hey man, I think this is your favorite episode, man, the showing feet. <laughs> and he he just like not cool dude. <laughs> it's just something I just I couldn't get over. So when I always saw that end scene towards the end of the credits where Karina and Alan walking in tree barefooted, and like the only thing that was on my mind at the time was I was thinking of my friend and how <laughs> Like, I need to show this to them. <laughs> and so I did. Ignore and imagine the reaction. And of course, it seems like Mary's plan to keep Alan in the dark of his own feelings has backfired. And that's what she gets. And that's the end of the episode. Like I said, nothing happened. Just, I guess, a feel for how he has... If you haven't noticed in most anime, they always have it when rivals... When opposite sex of rivals are with each other, they always seem to go grow closer. Who Katrin is going to end up with, I'm not sure because I can't find a DC wiki page or a Reddit to spoil it for me because I just want to be spoiled. But I can't find it. <laughs> so, anyways, web novel something. Well, anyways, that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, of course. Hit that bell icon. This has been American Anime. Signing out.